So, today we decided to celebrate our first ban on YouTube for our previous video about media manipulation. Yes! What an awesome thing to celebrate! Yay! About what we want to speak today. Um, well, in light of the fact that we had a really successful, we ended up having a really successful premiere of that video just on BitChute, Odyssey, Rumble, and brand new tube. Like, it's just funny because we got we got deleted from YouTube. We kind of expected that it could happen. We hoped that we had shaped our episode in a manner by coming at the angle of media media manipulation that it wouldn't get banned. We we had hoped that, but it didn't work out. It only lasted 40 minutes before they took it down. Um, and we were getting a really good response right away. So I don't know what it was specifically that got it removed because I've seen footage of Tenpenny on YouTube. I've seen media manipulation stuff all over the place. So what specifically how they knew that it was medical misinformation um, is how they specified the reason behind removing it. I I don't know. Was it an algorithm? Was it actually us? Because I've been banned so many times. Somebody watching us. I just think it's a it's a big shit show of virtual gaslighting and uh, mental torture for people that they don't like their message. Anybody whose narrative goes against the globalist establishment agenda they're going to be targeted and there's like thousands of different ways and techniques that they're doing it right now too. Plus they've been training the artificial intelligence all year, having us locked down, all using and communicating and doing business on our computers. They've been training their technology using us and our reactions to everything the whole time. Like they're, they're, they're like trying to test out whether or not their, their media manipulation strategies are working. Like, seeing whether certain types of uh, advertisements and whether it's in the, the margins of your screen, yeah. whether it's like a TV program or whether it's like a, a Netflix program, they're using artificial intelligence right now and tracking and tracing and all of those things that they're unfurling onto the world in their transhuman agendas. They're using that stuff to perfect the way that they manipulate us. And that's something that if you don't become really discerning about what you're consuming as a person using the computer, watching TV, watching entertainment, even just the books you're reading and the textbooks that you're le like learning from and what's being taught to your children and every single thing right now, it's all connected. And it's all about siphoning us into that transhuman world where Humans no longer exist. So it's like a backdoor genocide. Humans no longer exist. It's going to be replaced by cyborg, chimera, hybrid, um, integrated into our computer um, interfaces, like being able to see like <laughs> on our eyes, like they want us to no longer be human because they think that this is the door for living forever. And so there's so much that I want to say about this, Sash, uh, that that it, that it's a little unbelievable. But oh. you wanted to use that BBC, um, that BBC clip oh, to yeah. start it out. And I think that that's a really good starting point myself. I was so surprised why, first of all, why BBC pushing this idea into the hands and why they made it so cool. Like they spend a lot of money i will say and well they have a lot of money because they are yeah. the bankers so yeah and my also my point was like let's let's hear first what he's trying to say there i think digital immortality is definitely going to happen my hope is it happens within my own lifetime so i can take advantage of it if it doesn't i'm sure it will happen within the next century at worst is that what you're working towards now Digital immortality is one of the goals I'm working towards. I aim to build an artificial general intelligence, an AI system that can become massively smarter than human beings and understand more about the universe than any human possibly could. Ben and others like him call themselves transhumanists. First of all, this is all sick. Second of all, my biggest question, why like all this ugly nerds trying to, to be immortal? Why? Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, 
Yeah, that is an interesting thing. I like to, I'm probably going to design this shirt. So keep your eyes open on our shop for this shirt because I really want to do it because I want to wear it personally. This is another one of our shirts. And actually I re didn't even realize that I wore this particular shirt. It just happens to be perfect, but it's art official versus art artificial. And of course it's greater than. So art official, official is greater than art official. And really that's, because they want to replace creative, like human creativity with predictable, sterile, uh, artificial intelligence. Um, they want to replace human intelligence, which is organic, which they don't understand because these aren't just nerds. They're not just ugly nerds. They are actual psychopaths. And generational money, I think, contributes to that kind of mental illness if you it's not exactly you're not mentally ill when you have psychopathy but you can't feel emotions so you can still think perfectly fine so they can be brilliantly intelligent yeah but, but they truly believe that they they doing some great work and they like they i don't know they push uh evolution in the right direction Oh, they believe they they believe that or at least they're selling it that way because it's hard to know what a psychopath really thinks and believes or what they're manipulating you to think that they believe so that you'll go along with what they want you to go along with like bbc as far as looking at the media manipulation angle of why bbc would be doing a program trying to make this look cool and uh, the other thing is that the major media is the globalist. They own it. It's a complete monopoly. It's BlackRock, Viacom, I believe, um, or Vanguard. I can't remember. But I know that BlackRock is one of the biggest owners of media in the world now between two major corporations. So BBC is just a big, I mean, obviously one of the biggest of that agenda angle. And so what they want to do is they want to convince us of only the good applications of these technologies. So of course that will be like sold into it. They're selling us something. What they don't want us to realize is that the people behind the mask are vampires and they seek to use this technology for very different reasons. Of course, what they're going to do as far as how they use it on themselves versus how they're going to use it on the rest of us. Now that's another yeah. conversation, but they seek to uh, live forever, that's for sure. They definitely want to do that. And uh, they also want to blur the lines on everything so that people like 24 seven are afraid. BBC is such a big factor in fueling that global fear of the pandemic and of like, we have to hand sanitize and use chemicals to be safe and never go outside again and never talk to another person and never look at another person's eyes. They want to dehumanize us and totally exercise and like, us from nature. Like, yes, let's let's the chatting. Let's just uh, spend all your time in front of the computer and not actually communicate with uh, each other in real life. Yeah, yeah. So that you, because they know that one of the biggest things about human natural strength is our intuition, and our compassion, our empathy. And our ability to use those types of energetic connections and frequency genetic uh, or human connections, they want to sever that because psychopaths do not understand creative thought. They don't understand connecting to source. They do not understand connecting to each other. They are um, unable to experience those things about living and life and being alive and human. Uh, and so they don't understand like animals. They don't think animals have souls. They don't understand souls because in a way they're black hole souls. They're, they're like, they're just like, they're hungry vampires, hungry, hungry hippo vampires trying to grab all the light people and grab it all and, and try to understand it, but they can't. They, in trying to understand what they don't have, they destroy it. And so it's just interesting because the BBC is like the heartbeat as far as media manipulation and the agenda is concerned for the world. They want to make a one world uh, panopticon prison, essentially, but it's like using technology for spying, for tracking, for tracing, for, for using artificial intelligence to analyze all of our conversations and 
determine from those conversations who's a threat to them, who's a threat to their agenda, who doesn't agree with them, how well manipulations are working. Um, and like a lot of people like Elon Musk try to say that, that this, just carrying this around is the same, that we're already cyborg. And yes, for mm-hmm. sure. We're addicted to technology because we've it, they've purposefully designed our society where we have to be integrated with our technology to make money, to function, to fit in, to like be able to work in this society. But really, humanity doesn't need, in fact, it doesn't function well outside the village scale in reality, which they know. This is the other aspect of globalism that's our brains are designed for village scale. It's not designed to try to like worry about all the world's problems. And so they know these things about us and they're using these things about us in order to trap us into this invisible prison that as long as they can keep shuffling us into it without us being aware of the fact that we're being shuffled in, then they can close the door and be like, (laughs) finally, I have everything that I want and have the whole of humanity right where I need them, you know? They want to blur the lines on gender. They want to blur the lines on, on, on what's healthy for us, chemicals versus nature, sunlight versus being indoor all the time away from everyone, like locking us down. Uh, they want to make us think that tracking and tracing is for our safety. I mean, this is insanity right there. But also, at some they, point, it is. But again, it's it's always is no. How, how you I, don't need tracking and trace technology to keep people safe. That yeah. is bullshit. Yeah, for sure. that is but bullshit. It, yeah, like uh, I always like to say that uh, I like technology. Like I'm an engineer, and so I do love technology. But it's uh, always the question is about who control the technology which mm-hmm. which finger on the red button so it's is in any case it can go back to this question because for example if you will be in control of uh, technology i will be okay with that because i absolutely trust you like if i will be in control i also will have no problem there. i'll be honest because i've been through a lot and uh i have a little touch of ptsd as much as i love you and know that you're the most gentle soul on this planet i still wouldn't fully trust anyone even you to like be in control so of of this stuff you know if it's integrated into my body yes and i don't trust anybody but me yeah also my question is like if we put everything in a digital world and everything becomes zero and one it's a very easy to control you because also your money also depend like and, yeah and if like if government or anybody don't like what you're doing they can just easily can cut you off even from your bank account it, it will be much easier than right now to go into bank sign some papers and trying to figure out why we need to shut you down or something like that it will be just Push the button, done. Mm-hmm. No exactly. questions. No paper trail either. Yes, exactly, exactly. So, so if anybody wanted to see or prove that you'd been shut down, there's no way to do that really, you know, because they can just disappear anyone, especially when we don't have a, a real physical town square now where we go and like I said, the village scale where we go, we know everyone, we know their children, we know where they live. We're because we're friends, because they voluntarily give us their information because we live in a community, you know, mm-hmm. not because somebody's like peeping Tom on us and like using our smart meter to keep track of every time we turn a light on and off, mm-hmm. every time we use a computer, what type of search we're doing in Google. Uh, why we're doing it, how much we read, how much our, you know, what our facial expressions are in reaction to everything. They can watch us through our cameras. They're doing these biometrics. I mean, the detail at which they are collecting our passive data, things we think are not important is radical. And if people don't get a clue and start to realize that, just like you said, they can cut you off from your money. They Mm -hmm. can disappear you. They can blacklist you from being able to work they can demonize you easily. Yeah. They can, they can do virtually assassinate people. Um, like 
the the way that they've been doing. I mean, now censorship is is a big deal, and everybody's aware that it's occurring, or so many more people are aware that it's occurring on a grand scale. But it's been going on, and like I was tracking all the different ways that they were censoring me and my ability to communicate, reach out, make connections, get jobs, all kinds of things, putting people on watch the lists. It goes deep. People don't realize how deep it goes. Like if they find somebody to be a true threat, it's not uh, above uh, the establishment powers to send a honeypot in to there's been cases after cases of uh, people uh, from the FBI, CIA, infiltrating into activist groups and even marrying people and having children with them while they're on deep cover. Like, this is not, the, I would like to say that that's rare, but unfortunately it's not even rare. And they have the ability to determine nowadays, especially if they're tracking and tracing us from the moment we're born, if they're putting um nano computers into our body that can trace everything that we've eaten the quantities that we're eating how much sunlight we've gotten on our skin in our eyes they can do that already people don't realize that they can do that I, that they know all the medications we've taken i actually have some like uh, fitbits yes exactly some remarks on it because people willing to uh, give this information people want to give all of this information yeah people, they think it's going to help them be safe yes people people are very happy to uh, share this information and they don't think that uh, like this all information collected and it's stockpiled in a spe special place so yeah, now, and they have artificial intelligence yes, that can who, analyze it. Yes, exactly. It's all analyzed. It's like Google right now uh, asking me to provide them my personal information about my uh, mm, date of birth. And like, so years, I didn't have that information on my personal account. But right now they're asking it. And the reason why they're asking it, because they want to provide me personal ads so mm -hmm. they ask him my yeah but that's something that's a like a, it's like a service to you they want you to yeah. believe that that's a service like to you like what the hell I, if i need ads i will go and find something what i need i don't need even like our ancestry like they came after us with our ancestry like if you send in our your dna to them that they can tell you about where you come from and what your ethnicities are and all of these things right they made it look like a service that you're paying them money and now they have your DNA on file and God only knows what they're doing with it. Well, I think a lot of people are getting a picture now of what they're doing with it. And this yeah, it's is kind of this is the problem. Yeah, the, this this old technology and all this information, it's interesting. But yes, as soon as I share this information with them, it's no longer my personal information. It's all collected, it's all stockpiled, and that information can be used against me very easily. Yes, and quickly. And yeah. even can be used to genocide populations. This is what people need to understand, not I don't want people to, to hear what we're talking about and be afraid. I mean, there's utility in fear in certain circumstances. If it catalyzes a person to become more aware and learn about what's going on and what's true. And the, like I said in a previous uh, conversation, the understanding the box that we live in, mm -hmm. that's an important thing. If, if being afraid temporarily it catalyzes you into becoming aware, and to learning about the truth and its full capacity so that you can become empowered in that knowledge in order to take action in your life that's meaningful to protect yourself and your family and to become more of a participant in your community in order to change the way that these things are being steered, that's great. But if you're listening to this and you're like, oh my God, like we're so screwed, there's no way out of this. So we might as well just like give up and like just let them whatever and hope that they're nice to us. Uh, that's no good, but the, uh, to, to answer or to respond to what you said earlier, cause you're an engineer and you love technology. And so do I actually, as an artist, 
and as a creative person and as a person from a little bit older generation than you even where I know what it's like to be but actually you being from the USSR collapse you know what it's like to live without any technology yeah so it's like there's good things that come with technology absolutely but you have to realize that the powers that be the bankers are psychopaths and what are they wanting to do with that that's what people need to the big lie the gigantic lie that nobody believes possible that a small group of psychopaths or vampires or evil doers could be in control of all the weapons all this technology and be using it to hurt us that's a really like what is it the red pill or the blue pill the red pill it's a big red red pill to swallow yeah we're all going to matrix yes but understanding that this is the matrix and they seek to put us permanently into this synthetic borg-like place in order to be in control of us that this is a perversion of what is possible and they also i notice again and again and again over the last years, they try to convince people, audiences, and the way that they shape their media manipulation, they try to convince the audience that this is the only way forward, that it's already too yeah. late. Singularity, you know, the event horizon of, of this is impossible to avoid because the technology is here, whether you like it or you don't, this is the way it's going to be. We're going to be hybrids and that we're going to be genetically yeah. modified and we're going to be you and know. it's the only one way to survive. That's the That's only way to survive. Yeah. 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 Because That's if you so don't, sick. then you're going to be left behind. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm sorry, but I actually would like to be left behind. So if you could stop the ride and let me the fuck off, I'd really appreciate it because I don't want to go that way and I will not go that way. So yeah. it's not the only way. I'm not going to let these perverts these revenge of the nerdos convince me that because they want to live forever and human humanity is not good enough by their standards. Well, look at them in the mirror. No, they can are, you blame them? They are not good enough. So they, yes. maybe this is the reason why they go in that direction because they look at the mirror and they say, Oh man, I'm not so good. I probably, if I, <laughs> if I will merge with the robot, I will look much nicer. Look at <laughs> or, my chrome. Look at my I chrome think, and blur it. Uh, <laughs> I think that they think that, yes, but they're perverts, right? And so like hybrid furries, I mean, if you know about the fetish furries where people dress up in like animal suits and have sex with mm-hmm. each other in like pretending to be animals, mm-hmm. like these people are perverts and they believe, and I think that there's definite strategy into what they believe, whether I think it's sick, that's another story, but I can see how it could work and how it is working also. But they believe that with these pronouns and uh, making everybody gender dysmorph- dysmorphic with chemicals. Like people don't realize that, like I will admit openly that I used to have com- gender confusion when I was younger and I'm 45 almost. So when I was young, you don't think of the world being so chemically like saturated in the seventies and eighties, but it was, and I got very, very ill with autoimmune diseases. So it was, but it's only like hundreds of times worse now for the younger people but they want to blur the lines that this chemical pollution that's destroying our our hormones it's destroying our our fertility it's destroying even our maturation into adulthood where we even like back in the 60s 50s in the western world at least men were a lot more masculine like bigger hairier Mm -hmm uh you know they've become smaller this stuff isn't accidental this stuff was planned this stuff is they know what these chemicals like atrazine are are doing um they they know the effects that they can have and they can see the utility in making less masculine men less protective um less connected to their instincts of fatherhood or a parenthood or family and like protecting the land also if nobody owns any land or not doesn't have any land that they grow up they don't have any connection to the land yeah. if they're in a city where they're renting all the time they have nothing that's theirs that they need to defend these are all psychological things moving us into transhumanism where we own nothing and we're gonna be happy uh, yeah 
yeah yeah actually that's all very, of it this is very good point because yeah in this uh, common only for big cities when you renting out everything you don't have anything you just renting out everything because like for example if you go into the village you need to have everything to achieve water something. soil yeah. yeah even car like car you need to have a car because you always need to move uh, back and forth even near to near store which is mm -hmm. usually like five kilometers from your uh, position so yeah like it's will but never when you're work. in the village versus actually you are a really good uh example of this because you grew up in the ussr and the collapse mm -hmm. and you understand what it's like to kind of have an apartment but it's not really your apartment it's your flat but it's not really yeah. yours but now they're kind of moving into where you could buy out your own flat and own it so it's not communism the way that it used to be no it's but, not actually it's not like you're not buying out your you just sign the paper and then it's become yours you're not buying out you don't pay any penny oh, for that okay well okay but what I'm saying is, is the difference in your mentality when you own something and it is your home yes. versus if somebody else owns it and you're just paying them to stay there. Yes. It's a, it's a mentality of protecting what's yours. That's yeah. an instinct that we have. That's actually good for our survival. But like the same thing is you also have a village that's been in your family, a land where you yeah. can grow food and ha yeah. your family is able to grow a huge amount of your food every year on the Dacha garden setup that you have. Yeah. And you have like well water that's there. You have all kinds of things that you have exactly what you need to survive, but it's yours and everything in like the earth, your hands have been in that soil you grew up going and understanding that land. Your dad can find like a huge basket full of mushrooms instantly just walking through the forest. Yep. Like you understand that land and you are a part of that land. And therefore, if somebody comes on it, you are going to defend that land. And yeah, sure. Russian people that I mean, anybody who's a property owner that's had a history with a piece of land is going to understand defending it. Just like, like if you're a father and a mother in a family and that family is something that's a huge value, which is about our survival, you're going to defend your family. Yeah. But they, the hu transhuman agenda has eroded our identity, uh, first of all, as humans, which has biological realities, man, woman, those characteristics that come with those hormones and those things that have all been disrupted by industrialization, yeah. which is the same people behind transhumanism and globalism. They see this as the next industrial revolution. Transhumanism, this evolution is the next industrial evolution, but they also are the same ones that did the Georgia Guidestones that say they only want 500 million people on planet earth, but they didn't say that those, those 500 a million people that are left out of the 7.5 uh, billion that we have, that they will all be transhuman. That they want to reduce the population because they believe that they have the technology now to live forever mm -hmm. in one way or another, whether it's mapping the brain and creating an ultra world that's virtual or whether it's literally through science being able to keep our biological, like this husk of, of matter right here, that's Erica. That they can keep yeah. this this oh, yeah. flesh and blood husk alive for God knows how long. Yeah, it's like. Uh, uh, can you imagine? No, it's I so cannot. sick and perverted. Yes, exactly. It's also in that BBC video. One more ugly guy, man, says that um, aging is a disease, and he wants to find the cure for this disease. Yeah, and this guy is probably obsessed with with children. He's probably a big old pedophile pervert. These people are all. This is what they are trying to repackage and reimagine through propaganda and through commercials and reimagining and repackaging their brand name. That they're not sick, perverted, uh, nerdo, sickos, psychopaths. 
uh, that they are the gods of this new and improved reality through science. And if you don't like it, you're anti-science. These mm. people are cuckoo. And using entertainment, using the arts, using media, using uh, education, using every uh, avenue of manipulation that they have to convince us that none of these uh, former realities matter. N none of these tr human, human traditions matter that we should all be canceling that stuff because it's offensive. It offends this person. It offends that person. Mm -hmm. And oh, oh God, you called me a he, she, and I'm a they, them. <laughs> I'm gonna cry all day. Like they want everyone to be so weak and so unable to have barriers to protect themselves. Boundaries are a good thing, okay? They want uh, everyone to think that borders on nations are bad, that nobody is, you know, nobody is illegal. Uh, like, this sounds good on print. I mean, I remember when I first heard nobody is illegal and that, you know, borderless world because I love to travel and I'm a nomad. I was like, yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. But then when you realize the agenda, you realize that they want to do that so that there's no cultural identity because if everybody's just pooling together yeah. and there's no borders, yeah. there's no cultural identity, there's no physical identity, there's no traditional identity, and then they can create transhumanism, genderlessness, yes, all of this insane new normal stuff. And also, as soon as you losing your uh, culture identity again you become much easier manipulated it's like you will you will eat everything you what they will give you yeah. so it's if you're uh, starving you'll eat whatever they give you no i mean metaphorical uh, i know but i'm also saying literally they're yeah. they're metaphorically attacking us and they're literally attacking us so yes. you're correct to say what you're saying absolutely but they're literally trying to take away our ability to eat food they want to outlaw meat there's even uh, literature that I was reading the other day where they want to biologically, genetically modify us so that we're allergic to meat in the future. Yeah, they like want us to eat bugs. They want us to just eat whatever like packaged garbage that they spit out of a lab. They want us to have no uh, uh, attachment to anything that has been identifiable as humanity. They want us to, to think that this is like um, bigotry, misogyny, patriarchy, uh, that they want to drive home that all of, like transhumanism is feminism, uh, transgenderism is feminism, and uh, everything is everything, and nothing is nothing. Like nobody, it's like I said in the last episode, if everybody's an artist, nobody's an artist. If if everybody is transhuman nobody's human because transhuman is not human so yeah. and yeah wanna... in, in the in the woman lock room the man comes well, easily and it's like show the tools it's like oh no yes. i think i see... think i think i'm a woman and doesn't mean that like i'm still a man in, in every way it's okay it's okay for a man to go into the women's section show his penis around the other women, young little girls under age, your spa, we spa, condone that. Is that what you're saying? Because they want to make everybody confused as to, they, they, if, you don't, if you don't agree with me, then you're anti-science. And an attack on me, Erica, and my personal philosophies on life is an attack on reality, okay? So you attack one person, you attack all people like mm -hmm. they want to have us so disoriented like uh ten penny said in our last video two plus two is five they've even uh convinced through scientific videos i've watched all over the world that they've proven that two plus two equals five um they want i to i i studied in a university i know and they've studied yes. they studied that everywhere that, that two on two you can prove that it's five you actually can prove it in right. mathematical language. But the point is, the greater point is that you can alter reality to make anything true if you provide enough 
convincing evidence. This is where the rabbit hole gets real, real crazy. Because like I said earlier, they're black hole souls. And when you think about astronomy and when a star or a light, I like to use this as a metaphor for humanity and what's happening right now. When a star comes too close to a black hole, that's the first time that you'll ever be able to see or identify that the black hole is there, unless you have a frequency uh, reading technology where you can say, I believe because of the reading, there's probably a black hole there, but I'm not absolutely sure until a star comes too close. Mm -hmm. Then you can start to see it. But the whole thing about a black hole is to eat this yeah. because it doesn't understand it at all. This is a uh, psychopaths want to do, and they're a very small group of people and they want to take all of us and put us into their control because we're so powerful. If we understood our, uh, our potential humanity only is using a very small percentage of their brain as of it, as it is right now. And that's by design. Like mind, ex everything that's about mind expansion, meditating, uh, interconnectivity, intimacy, uh, mind expanding drugs, even, which is in nature almost every time. But like these breathing rituals, all of these things have been taught uh, to be ridiculed, removed, uh, dismissed as being uh, scientific or relative, even spirituality and connecting to something that's beyond our physical reality. Like all those things have been demonized and, and inverted. What they truly mean has, mean has been inverted in order to manipulate us into this trap where the light is eaten by the black hole mm -hmm. and it is defeated. It is ripped apart because that every time you see a, a star meet a black hole, it's ripped apart thread by thread by thread mm -hmm. by thread. And that's the point at which we're at right now. So we either realize that we're circling the drain of that event horizon moment where they are trying to shuffle us all out of our own humanity and our own potential as humans. But also like our potential of like with these other species, like humans have interconnection with other species in, in, in um, so many different levels of metaphysical reality that we haven't even explored because we've been run by these psychopaths for so long. And like understanding the truth of our, our potential through just mind expanding what we already have. Like if we actually started using more of our actual brain and not doing it in the mind science way where they sexually abuse children to like fracture, fracture and shatter the mind so that they can get into the mind and control it through that compartmentalization process that they use. But true, organic, uh, healthy food, uh, healthy, everything that we need is in nature, right? Like you get outside, you feel happy with the nature, you grow things, you understand how to get your food, where your food comes from and all the enzymes in the soil when you're digging in it and all of the like way that these things affect your, your chemistry as a person when you're like outside and smelling the fresh air and it's clean and it doesn't have chemicals and pollution in it. Like that's the way that we could be evolving and be on creator's side whether you call it god jesus christ whatever you want to call it buddha i don't really it doesn't matter to me that part of the human self that is beyond this physical manifestation the infinite side of what we are they want us to forget all of that they want to forget energy and frequency and they want to disrupt all of that because they can't understand it the black hole cannot ex understand the light and they don't even exist until the light shows that they exist. And in that process of showing that they exist, they also disappear because the light can destroy the darkness. It's not the other way around. So I just wish that people could understand that the transhuman objective, like there's nothing wrong with technology. Technology is awesome. Like I love technology. I love being able, but the thing is, is they're, they're hiding all the good technology. They're keeping it for themselves, like better, cleaner energy. That's been around forever. Like yeah. they it's have so much technology that's amazing that we don't know shit about. Yeah.
it's a lot of people think that uh, as soon as they create um like um robots prototypes when people lose their um hand hands arms oh yeah or legs, exactly and uh, people think that right now because science in that regard goes so far than like uh, they right now can attach a, a brain to the um, manipulator for the hands mm -hmm. like you put it on your cotton hand, arm and yeah. then you can man manipulate it and the people think that this technology will be uh, easy to get to everybody and mm -hmm. this is the biggest mistake this all technology they are awesome they really will make uh, people's uh, human race uh, like life easier and better especially mm -hmm. for pe for people who uh, get uh, who went through the car accident mm -hmm. but well to be you... honest those those replacement uh, parts for amputees are because so many men and women are being sent to war and being like but, no, these and, people have been making a lot of victims in, in any is case, what I'm saying. In any case, all these people, all this how you said victims, they will not have the option to get this um uh, technology easily because basically they don't have enough money to get it. Well, not just not enough money, but we also on planet Earth don't have enough resources for seven and a half billion people to have access to it. Yeah, no and like like starving children. I've been in the landmines. All of these people will need to like arm replacement or something, but still, I I mean obviously, but the people who need these replacements are people that are children that have been put into minefields. Like this is all human trafficking, like stories. These are the people going to war. These are the refugees. These are the people being put into horrible conditions by the same people who want us to believe that they're going to gain access to it. They use our own victimhood to convince us that we need what they've created. They've created our victimhood and then they've created this so-called illusion that we can have that can be make our life better after being victimized. This is the infinite cycle these freaks have us in, these revenge of the pervs, as I, as I told you, I need to make that shirt. Because... <laughs> They want us to think that them peeping on us, which used to be like somebody, your dad would go outside and get your shock, the shotgun and shoot them off your windowsill. Yeah. If a guy was looking in your window, your dad yeah. would shoot his ass and the cops would pat him on the back and say, good job. Mm -hmm. um, but now the fuckerberg can be looking through the, through the camera lens and, and through Siri and through Alexa and through all of our technology and all of our GPS on our cars and everything else. And then in the, that they want to put into us now and the smart dust and the stuff raining down from the sky that they can spray on us. And nobody understands the truth of those technologies, but they can spy on us in every which way. And even if they have GMO mosquitoes that infect us with this technology which they've even talked about this is not like i'm not making this stuff up they can also the whole birthing person is no longer a mother yeah the, that's so the sweet. reason that that's they so say sweet. that is because they already can bring a baby from a fertilization process to birth with cloning and all different types of of technologies and and synthetic wombs that they've created they already have all that stuff such these are the same people like John of God and Epstein and his New Mexico ranch and uh, the Epstein Island and all of that human trafficking. They found it in China through those uh, like uh, organ harvesting prisons that they have those slaves like in. In Northern Africa, they have these human puppy mill camps where they're making babies like John of God. They caught women tied to beds that they were just using to have babies from the time that they're fertile. They're just taking their babies and selling them around the world. Uh, these are the same people that want us to go into this technology. This is the exact same people because they don't, they already have the technology for creating babies. They don't need a human puppy mill now. They can just have a big matrix a uh, hive of mm -hmm. incubators. Yeah. I put the babies with the incubator. But anyway, that's another tangent. <laughs> um, uh, 
but they can literally that we don't need mothers we don't need strong men to defend the family and defend the you know the turf they they need to get rid of those people because the fat pudgy like i want to live forever i am klaus schwab and i think that you should own nothing and be happy so that i can own everything and be forever (laughs) in my beauty i'm going to twist my nipples now like Uh. this guy (laughs) (laughs) these are the freaks like zuckerberg and his white zinc on his face while he's surfing he looks like an android already like He's like, once everybody's an android, I won't stand out so much. And yeah. Bezos with his one little eye and his one big eye. And, oh, Kissinger is a real looker. I want a Kissinger some Kissinger, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and, or let's think, what's a good looking one? Can we think of one? Even Elon Musk is kind of a freak. No, oh, yeah. I mean... <sighs> I it can't think of a good nice. like Bill Gates. Talk about, uh, I mean, talk about Revenge of the Nerds. Like yeah. that guy. I'm going to take over the world. I have all the seeds and I have all the farmland and I have all of your genetics in my computer, supercomputer. <laughs> I mean, these people are, are freaks. Even Epstein wasn't attractive. I can't think of a single, <laughs> because if you don't have a soul, Usually, so th- usually in that direction goes people who uh... Soros is attractive. Actually, come to think of it, Hillary oh, yeah. Clinton, beautiful. Yeah, they they are handsome. Dudes. I can't think of one actually, but they're like all losers. But they, oh Boris Johnson, how could I have forgotten oh. these now? Yeah, this is the the beautiful the 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 uh, oh oh the Trudeau. Prudence. The Everybody thinks much. Trudeau is pretty. I think he is uh, pretty. Yeah, pretty psychopathic. It, that guy is a total. But yeah, he he sold his soul. He sold. Oh, his absolutely. Soul. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I, they took it real young, probably because his dad is also a tied up with some crazy stuff. But the point is, is that this is an ideology that a lot of people on Earth that I like and I'm friends with believe that this transhuman ideology is a great way it's the only way forward they do believe this because they've been i truly believe that they've been manipulated that they've been convinced that this is the only way forward it's already too late because everybody's addicted to this and you know everybody's addicted to this and so there's no way that people can go back to the farm and there's no way that people can go back to the village and there's no way because it's too late they think where is the balance where is the balance you can't be on the village and you still uh, can't have technology well that's the thing is that i see a world where we can integrate with technology and it's a beautiful world it's a great awakened world where we mind expand in a natural way without integrating with these technologies in our bodies like i'm all for like the the um um going outward into the cosmos with technology that's fine but not going into the interspace which that's when when just side note because we're russia america talk but when putin came out with sputnik and how he was the first the you guys were the first in space with sputnik and then he's the first in inner space i, I was like oh man no mm-hmm. I don't want anybody go being the first in the inner space. Like this is to me, this is really perverted. And like even that Netflix, which by the way is run by the Obamas, which I think are big old pervs. Um, Sweet Tooth on Netflix. This stuff is now becoming all pervasive. Like I can't. I mean, it seems like I can't escape it. It's Black Mirror. It's it's all of this is training us for this singularity yeah. and and the integration and uh but like hybridization merging with animals and that's cute speaking about propaganda and media manipulation like go back to the from what we started it's when you hear and see that some message pushing into your head over and over and over again you always need to start ask questions because we need 
all the time asking question because when some information when some people trying to convince you that this idea is good you need to start to ask even more questions because why i should believe you that this is good just because you 10,000 times repeated on the tv or like in a tv shows or like in a music especially in tv show yeah netflix especially bad with that because they... well actually amazon prime all of them apple tv they're right all right now they yes all are. right now yeah. they all go in that direction and they all repeat all well they're the all owned things. by blackrock and some other group i can't remember yes, the other and... one and that is also what is very sad because like it's become very easy to push any agenda because again we're speaking about that all mass media belongs yeah, well, to people the don't same realize people. how deep the monopoly the transnational transnational monopolies how they have proliferated and taken over and gobbled up everything like people think that think that just that there's a law surely there's a law that prevents them from having a global monopoly but this is the thing that they've been finding every way to use loopholes so that as long as we can't tell what they're doing that they can gobble us up so the same thing with how they've even locked us down it's all connected they locked us down so they could destroy medium small business independent contractors with these monolithic all owned by the agenda like if you tra trace blackrock they own i think pfizer and moderna uh amazon uh apple uh walmart um uh fa yeah, facebook like they and own facebook. and then they're buying up the suburbs while bill gates is buying up the farmland these people are uh quietly and secretly and subversively gobbling up every sector of everything while we think it's our fault or we blame a pandemic or we blame black lives matter or we blame antifa or we blame uh all or or these bigots or we blame um the you know white supremacy everybody around or yes, yes everybody we, around. or we blame real women versus trans women and bigots versus gays and uh like latins versus americans and america versus the world and putin and whatever it doesn't matter the thing is is that they're just using all of these things that could be used in a way to we could discuss it respectfully and understand that um like i said in the previous one you can go to the mediterranean and if you're a scuba diving versus being on the beach it's going to be two different perspectives on the same place yeah. like we can appreciate that we all have a valuable perspective on the same topic mm -hmm. and that nobody is perfectly right and nobody is perfectly wrong it's just a different way of coming at a problem yes yeah and like you can come to an intersection from many angles and what's right for you isn't going to be right for the person opposite of you it's going to be left so that this is something that people need to understand is that tolerance is a very important thing but so is having understood boundaries a very important thing both of those things are important like there is a like you said earlier there is a golden middle there is a balance Mm -hmm. It's like Russia is not all one thing and Russia isn't even all just like Putin's Russia. It's every Russian's Russia. It's individuality and collectivity have their value in the right context, but they've totally destroyed context through media manipulation. Like they've totally destroyed even what understanding language by destroying these like redefining words, like weaponizing words, like we said in our video weaponizing words is a strategy to make uh, every conversation a landmine field like it's mm -hmm. if you you can't even bring up a word or if you use the wrong word political correctness becomes fascism because if you if you don't feel safe trying to express yourself because sometimes finding the right words is not so easy but if you're already worried that if you're going to use the wrong words, you're going to get canceled, then you don't even know how to start. So they've already censored you without having to censor you. Yeah. This is 
where people don't understand how deep this stuff goes and how deeply controlled that we really are and how few people are behind that control. And transhumanism is the, it's, it's being sold to us like snake oil. It's being sold to us uh, as the best thing to cure all wrongs and global warming and fix all these problems and, you know, it's fix all this pollution. Selling. But it's the victimizer that's creating the solution. It's the person that polluted everything, creating the reason, the way to fix the pollution when they're the ones polluting everything and profiting off of it. So they're creating the way to profit off of the solution to the problem Mm -hmm. that they create and keep creating. And, but they're the only, the expert. So they have the Harvard degree. They have the, oh, I I went to Harvard. Where did you go? You nobody, you papa, you peon. Oh my God, I am an expert. You as a you are a loser. And if you don't, if you <laughs> if you question me, you question science. If you question me, then you question reality as it stands. There is no critical thinking when the criticism is about me. <laughs> thank you so much for being here, and sit, thank you so much for coming on this uh, journey with us and participating in the comments below because I love hearing what you guys have to say, and I know Sashi does too. But if you want to hear us talk about anything in particular, please let us know. And all the donations and purchases of my original designs through the Art with Aim shop, like we really appreciate it. It allows us to spend more of our time devoted to creating these materials and doing these talks and uh, creating art with aim into something that can become our full-time focus in life and hopefully reunite us together. So thank you so much for your support, your participation and being here. And we appreciate it. You can find us on all types of platforms with Sashi made into a a blog entry, I believe you said. You made it so that you can find all the different new channels that we've created since being horribly and cruelly deleted from youtube for our last video and if you haven't checked out our last video please do and we hope you like it and we're looking forward to making the next one so So until then we need to talk we need to talk